My name is Robin Mansell. I'm from the London School of Economics in the UK. And it is my great privilege to chair this plenary. Uh, the topic, which has now gone off the overhead, is governing digital spaces, issues of access, privacy, and freedom. And um, I have, uh, as I said, I've been invited to chair it. I'm very privileged to do that. I've also been asked to give a few remarks, opening context-setting remarks, which I'll do in a moment. First, I want to introduce our panelists to you. Um, we have Professor Carlos Alfonso de Souza, who is um, an advocate of the open internet regulation in uh, Brazil, and he's been very active in the Marco Civil legislation. He is the um, first person on your left. <laughs> um, then we have Sunil Abraham, who is executive director at the Center for Internet and Society, which is a research organization based in Bangalore, which explores the democratic potential of the internet. Then we have Michael Gerstein, who uh, is the executive director of the Center for Community Informatics Research, Development and Training, which is based in Vancouver, Canada, but also has an office in Cape Town, South, South Africa. And finally, we have Anita Gurumurthy, who is the executive director of IT for Change, which works at the intersection of development and digital technologies, and importantly, works on gender-related issues. Um, they're not necessarily going to speak in that order. <laughs> um, in order to think about governing digital spaces, I think it's really important to um, set a context because we'll have some general presentations and also some more specific case studies. And I thought it would be useful just to concentrate our minds on three very entrenched but very different Contested, narrative, uh, contested narratives about governance. They'll all be familiar to you, but I think it's important to fix them in our minds when we talk about issues of access, privacy, and freedom. The first one is digital information markets are, or they should be, free. This is the neoliberal argument. You'll all be very familiar with it. The second one is that the regulatory or the military state interests, however they're articulated, should intervene in the marketplace to enhance citizen welfare, sometimes referred to as consumer welfare. And the third one is civil society actors, generally setting on one side, the private sector and government, um, and or the technical communities are absolutely key and central to democratic processes, and they can and will prevail against state intervention if we can only get our procedures and opportunities for having voice and making decisions in place. Um, very simply and graphically, in the first case, the free market, the market basically is expected to sub actually subordinates the interests often of the military state and also of civil society. The market is expected to keep a check and protect the public interest. Free means, as I said, neoliberal market-led. So with the arrow going downwards, I'm indicating basically that markets are expected to subordinate other actors and do so in the common interest. In the second case, it's the state that is expected that actually subordinates either the regulatory state or the military state is expected to keep the market in check to keep market failures um, from damaging citizen or the public interest. So in this case, you see the arrow going towards market and civil society. In the third case, civil society and technical communities are expected to keep markets and the military and regulatory state in check. A tall order. In order to do this checking process in the last decade or so, we have seen many multi-stakeholder processes being put in place, many of which have been discussed during this conference. Um, in each of those cases, what we often see is a very uneasy, uncomfortable compromise being um, the outcome between state market, civil society uh, roles, but also their actions. 
What tends to happen, and I take the World Summit on the Information Society plus 10 process which is ongoing as an example, what tends to happen is lots and lots of goals are articulated, whether they have to do with access or privacy or um, citizen rights. Goals tend to be quantified and measured because in the dominant paradigm, if you can measure it, then it must matter. If it's hard to measure and quantify, then perhaps it's a little bit more difficult to grapple with. And those much more hard to grapple with issues, often being concerned with human values, human rights, are often aspirational. And quite often, if you read carefully the texts of these many multi-stakeholder processes, they're without reference to specific actor roles or to the constraints under which those actors work. And I think it's very important to bear that in mind, that we need to couple texts and discourses with everyday practice and the real constraints that all people, whatever their interests, are operating under. So in the current reality, I would suggest, and I would be interested to see how this comes through in the presentations from the panelists, in a way, we're in a standoff. As you can see, if you take the triangle, I've got the arrows going in all directions to indicate there's interaction amongst all of these stakeholders. But I put the, t the black um, bold around market and regulatory and military state to indicate that in, in reality, despite the fact we have a standoff, it is the market which is ascendant. It is quite often the military state with regard to surveillance, for instance, which is ascendant. And the regulatory state certainly hasn't gone out of business. We hear enormous amount of talk about new independent regulatory agencies, etc., as if they were going to, by themselves, protect the public interest. Civil society and technical communities are in a constant struggle, and I hope we'll hear a considerable amount about that in the panel. In terms of actually governing these digital spaces, when you turn to the academic literature, particularly recently, to see what ways forward are being suggested in terms of concrete actions. There is a lot of reference to strengthening global or regional or national governance mechanisms. There is enormous amount of reference to multi-stakeholder processes, but only the occasional reference, I would suggest, to issues of how you scale them up and make them actually um, not only more participatory, but operational in the face of very real regional conflicts and how you make them relevant to the specific context in which all of you live and work. Quite often you hear reference to industry self-regulation, to the need to acknowledge systematic market failure, to strengthening national regulators, to controlling monopolistic firms. All very well, but that is very much within the state uh, private sector domain. What we really need to think about is how to integrate civil society voices into any of those processes. And I'll leave you with a thought, because this is IMCR from Professor Dallas Smythe, who in 1950s, long before the internet, but still at the beginnings of broadcasting, made this comment. What kind of world will be born through the midwifery of our new and more powerful communications tools? It's a profound and central question. It is not something which is necessarily historical. It is about looking forward, looking forward at the profound choices that have to be made by the stakeholders, and they are making them on a daily basis. Um, so I turn to our panelists uh, to have their comments on these issues of governing digital spaces. Thank you.